Welcome to the Bourbon Van. I'm Phil. I'm Julie. It's round three already. Welcome to the Bourbon Van's 2023 Advent Whiskey Tournament, presented by Bull Run Distillery and their extensive award-winning line of craft spirits. Unbelievable. Round three, and there's four days in round three. Today, we're drinking the same thing. Love it. On the fourth day of round three, we're drinking the same thing. Love it. And on the two days sandwich in between, four whiskeys on the table because we could not get on the same page in round two there. That's okay. I want to give a quick shout out to these whiskeys <laughs> and talk about where they came from. Whiskey number one, is that what we got on the right here? Yes. Okay, so whiskey number one knocked out Old Ezra Rye seven year. Then it knocked out Old Elk Cigar Cut for oh, you. Right. And it knocked out Doc Swinson Alter Ego Triple Cask for me. Number three knocked out Duke John Wayne Bourbon to begin with. Right. Then it knocked out Rare Breed Bourbon. Oh, right. Then I remember it, that day. Then it knocked out Larceny Barrel Proof C922. Yep. So no big deal. These are just a couple <laughs> of absolute sluggers that are meeting here for the first time together in round three. And they are beautiful. They smell amazing. The aroma on the table is incredible. The color is beautiful. Let's get right to it. That's some rich oak in there. Rich oak, a little spice, a lot of sweetness. Spice. Boy, that smells great. What a way to start off today. That smells incredible. Just wiping down these glasses because I don't want <laughs> You know, we're in the in the third round here. I want everything to smell like it's supposed to smell. Ah, well, glass number two doesn't smell like I was expecting it to smell. Because <laughs> oak, wow. is, oak is not the first thing that I get on this one. It is... It's a caramel bomb. Yeah, and so vanilla-y. And coffee. Oh, and coffee. So you, you have given that oh. note a couple times, the caramel macchiato. Oh, yeah, You've yeah. still never had one, but if, if I could imagine what one would smell like... Yeah. Glass two, perhaps. I do love a good vanilla latte, and so maybe it's pretty close to that. Swirl some uh, caramel little, in there. A little caramel in there. Well, we'll find out next. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, dang. Oh, I remember this one. Actually, I didn't think that we both chose this one, which is funny. No, but... this has been a runaway train. This whiskey's amazing. Oh, okay, good. Because mm -hmm. this one I got some tea on. This one is just coating like crazy. There's fruit sweetness, there is spice, there is a little graininess, but I don't know, It's it's got all the parts are there. There's so much to untangle in yeah. this whiskey because there's so much going on. It's so flavorful. Man. It's so flavorful. Yeah. And the spice that hangs around on the finish, maple syrup coming up here on the finish mm. now, oh man. It's just beautiful. And the coffee is sweet coffee. That's lingering. Vanilla. It just keeps giving. And I'm just sitting here. I haven't had a second sip yet. I know. I'm just enjoying all of your flavor notes, drinking along to you. I think it's <laughs> lovely. I just... Drinking along to the uh, soundtrack of the Advent Tournament. Yeah, the soundtrack of the Advent Tournament. We hope you're drinking along too. <laughs> sure, you guys know what we're drinking, so maybe you are drinking along. Yeah. I think we should drink along with it when it goes live. Ooh. We could just Because we have a little ourselves. extra and then we could be like, what were we talking about? Or like, nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> There's really no in between. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad that this made it to round three. I love everything about this, really. I like the, the brightness. I like the like the dark flavors that presents, the tobacco. I did get some tea note and citrus. There's some nice spice there, the oak. Everything you said, it's a little bit creamy. I like it. Yeah, and just a hint of bitterness yep. to indicate where it came from, yep. from that barrel. And it is, boy, it's just lovely. It coats so well. The finish lasts an eternity. Whatever's in glass number one is a very, very fine whiskey. Man, I hope that's one of those like $20 whiskeys that's just punching way above its weight class right now. I don't think that it is, but we could be <laughs> optimistic. This is one of these where I don't actually need to drink anymore because those first two sips were, they were so wonderful. Like, I know that I like this. Well, we got what we came for on glass number one. Definitely. Let's see what glass number two has to offer. This is whiskey number three. <laughs> it's creamy on the nose. It's such a weird whiskey. <laughs> How it just keeps on like meandering through and beating up on these other whiskeys. It's yeah. really impressive, whatever this is. This, I'm already smiling. I haven't even drank it yet. <laughs> There's just been a couple matchups where it was sad. You knew it was going to be sad to say goodbye to one of them. 
they just either they paired up really well which is why they were so great or they just were really great i like both of these they they are quite different from each other though what's that hunter thompson line that at the end of fear and loathing in las vegas when he says he was some sort of high-powered super mutant too rare to live and too weird to die or something like that <laughs> love it that's this whiskey to me yeah it's so weird but it's also like this you know beautiful creature yeah that should be celebrated it's a flash in the pan yep. no idea where it came from or where it's going but i love it as it is and it's just yeah it makes me smile it's such a weird whiskey i know i love the coffee no it, it it's cre i mean it's everything that we said you've got the oak and the caramel there's a bit of coffee note a smidge of tobacco on there um it just it just tastes creamy. Like you're thinking you're drinking something more milkshakey. Yeah. I mean, that's not right, but it's almost like the picture. slurry at the bottom of like a butterscotch sundae. Yeah. Because I usually put too much butterscotch in my butterscotch Definitely. sundaes. Yeah. Who does it? <laughs> mm, it is flavorful. It, it it the coffee, caramel, vanilla sort of note here is so enjoyable. That is so tasty. Mhm. Mm Man. It isn't, I don't think, as complex as glass number one. But maybe that's because glass number one had so much spice it felt more complex. Yeah. Or I maybe it's just that, yeah, that glass number one, I, I always say this, like, feels like you're drinking whiskey. Yeah. Where glass number two, you could, it, it also feels like you're drinking whiskey. You could but, make the argument that you're drinking a cocktail, but, even though it hasn't been mixed. Yeah, exactly. Like, there could be something else at play there. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like drinking a milk stout or yeah. something like that yes. that has, like, the lactose in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, It just, it leaves a film on your tongue in the best possible way. That You Man. couldn't have said it better. That is exactly, just, I'm thinking about, like, when we used to brew beer, and we would always add the lactose as well. It just added the body to yeah. it. Yeah, and this is, I mean, a caramel cream on the palate, that's, or on the finish, that's what I'm getting. It's just hanging around, it's lingering <laughs> forever. Even though there's more things on the finish hanging around from glass number one, glass number two's finish, it becomes pretty one note, but what that note is, is fantastic. Yeah, and I've, I've just, I forgot that we were in a competition and I've just been having a good time and I basically drank the whole glass. <laughs> that sounds like a very Julie thing to do. I've actually had four sips of this one, which I don't usually do on the first pass, yeah. but I'm really trying to get into it today because both of these deserve our complete attention. They're both fantastic. There's a brightness to it that becomes a mustiness yeah. on the palate at some point. And that sort of transition is what's attracting me to mm -hmm. this glass. It's a really complicated glass. That's why I keep saying, like, oh, I wonder if this is, like, a $20 bottle that people will be like, what are they talking about yeah. with this bottle? I kind of hope that it is, because whatever it is, I just want to rediscover it over and over again. When the tournament is over, when we find out what this glass is, regardless of when that happens, that's a bottle I want to buy. Yeah. I think it's great. I did get a black cherry note on the finish, which was kind of nice, because I wasn't getting a ton of fruit. Like, I was getting some citrus and rye spice and and baking spices and all the things that I mentioned, but I wasn't getting any fruit, and the finish did, didn't did disappoint with that dark cherry note. Yeah, absolutely. The, the fruit continues to evolve in this glass, too. Like you said, citrus, the black cherry. There's a little bit of that currant flavor coming around. It's just great. We keep saying the caramel macchiato, and I may have said this in another round, or maybe I was just thinking it, but it also has a very tiramisu-ness to it. Mm -hmm. You know, the filling that you get, like that coffee note, the cream, it's decadent. There's even a, like a Cool Whip sort There's of... There's a Cool Whip-ness to something it. Something that reminds me of Cool Whip. Mm -hmm. I think maybe it's that creaminess. Yeah. Delicious. Glass number two is not nearly as complex. It's not as complicated. It's not as layered. But it is a simple delight, and it is... This I can see light. why it knocked out some big, some very oh. stiff competition in this tournament. I want whatever's in glass number two. You're almost out of whiskey there. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm narrowing it down. I think I know what I'm going to do. I'm sad to see one of these go. Absolutely agree. This is a, this is a championship round right here. Yeah. One of these, one of these could win this tournament. I'm feeling good about my decision. Are you really? I am. I'm not, I'm not happy with mine. Oh, great. A sad day to see one of them go for each of us. I am very curious to see if we choose the same one here. And one, two, three. We did. Okay. It was just so complex. There's so many yeah. layers there. There's so much to unpack. And it's a joy. And glass two, simple delight. 
so good. What a butterscotch cream bomb. There's a whole lot to like there in glass number yep. two. That's whiskey number three that we're saying goodbye to. Yep. This whiskey has done some damage in this tournament. Let's grab that envelope, find out what we got here. Are you surprised that I eliminated number three? I absolutely am. <laughs> I mean, I know how happy it makes you. And in yeah. this tournament, a lot of times the happy whiskey is the one that wins out. Um, but yeah, I mean, glass number one is such a fantastic glass of whiskey. So complex, yeah. so much to dig into and find there. Super dangerous in this tournament. Yeah. So we say goodbye to glass number three. Hopefully not forever. I can't wait to. <laughs> I can't wait to find out what this is. This I is know. a bottle I want on the shelf. It's great. What if we have it on the shelf? Great. So we say goodbye to number three today. Thank you so much, Bill Rule. I loved this one. Bill, fantastic. Yes. Thank you, Bill. Outstanding. And if my very limited whiskey knowledge is correct, I think this is a Texas whiskey. It wow. is Iron Root Harbinger XC. Okay, I don't know what XC is, yeah. but we do have an Iron Root Harbinger. I feel like maybe that means something that I should probably know. <laughs> we have an Iron Root Harbinger, and it is one of the wildest rides. There's a million flavors in it. Yeah. This one was a definitely more streamlined than the one that we've got on the shelf, but I'm going to revisit that bottle tonight because I'm very curious. What is it with us in Texas? We really do yeah. like the, what they're doing down in Texas. Iron Root is a Texas, right? Yeah, and Bill, okay. and, Bill and Heather are Oregonians currently, but they're originally from Texas. That's right. And uh, thank you for sharing your Texas whiskey with us and helping us to discover some more flavor here. That is an outstanding bottle. If you haven't had Iron Root Harbinger XC, the 90 proof. That's, 90 proof. Wow, it and drinks I, so nice. It drinks so wonderfully. I literally am going to try to find this bottle. Yeah, we'll find it in our travels yeah. this year because it's definitely not something that's available here, but that yeah. is outstanding whiskey. If you haven't tried Iron Root Harbinger or XC and you have a sweet tooth, yeah like we do, uh, you definitely need to check that out because that is an interesting, interesting, flavorful and enjoyable whiskey. So. And I'm curious if you get the same flavor notes that we were getting because I do like Texas whiskey, but I've never had flavors like this out of a Texas whiskey before. No, and I usually am able to pick those flavors out. Yeah. I don't know if it's just the competition or what, but let's keep in mind that whiskey knocked out Larceny Barrel Proof. That yeah. whiskey knocked out Wild Turkey Rare Breed. That whiskey knocked out the Duke. That whiskey has knocked out things that are 88 proof all the way up to 120 plus proof. Yeah. That's how good that 90 proof whiskey is. And that's what I was going to say. We encourage people to send in samples that they really loved, that they think could be sleepers. And I feel like this was a sleeper. Like a 90 proof for making it to the third round, knocking out what you just said. That feels crazy, but... I loved every minute of it. Well, if there's one thing we enjoy here at the Bourbon Van Advent Tournament, it is when the craziness happens. And I think we are in the thick of it now from wherever we are. To wherever you are. Cheers. Cheers. I'm going to find this. You know, if you haven't ordered Christmas gifts yet, there's plenty of good items in the Bourbon Van store online. It probably won't be there by Christmas, but just the thought that counts, right? You got it me is. something from the Bourbon Van? That's so fantastic. I don't even care that it showed up a week and a half late. <laughs> You're not a great salesman. <laughs> Was your whiskey hand-selected by the bourbon van? If not, it should be. Click the link below in the description and get yours today.